We got Nathan here at the Cinemassacre video store. Hello, and Nathan. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. And we're going to talk Duel, which right off the top, I want to say this is one of the greatest horror films, greatest suspense, mm. uh, greatest chase films, mm -hmm. and one of the greatest directorial debuts, Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. His first feature film. Yeah. Yep. He did uh, the episode of Night Gallery first, mm -hmm. uh, Eyes, which is part of the, the, the pilot feature movie. Mm -hmm. whatever. It was um, a... Um, TV film, and yeah, then turned into for like TV, a, yeah. a, a theatrical film, but what? yeah, it's good. It was yeah, Eyes was great. Was it an yeah. hour, right? The first yeah, it was, it was like an hour. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Duel, you mean? Duel, Duel, Duel yeah, yeah. yeah, Duel, and then they added some more scenes to make yeah. it a little longer. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I for, I'm saying because because Eyes was also TV, so I thought. Oh it was no, 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 I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I never saw any of that old stuff. I saw that documentary about him making mm -hmm. Duel when they showed his TV stuff. Mm -hmm. but I've never mm -hmm. gone and watched that. Any yeah, I never knew where to find it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, check out uh, Night Gallery, the first episode. It's like an hour and a half, like anthology it, thing. So, is oh. it like a Twilight Zone? Yeah, type thing? It, it's a, it's Rod Serling. It's it's his show oh. after Twilight oh, Zone. Oh, yeah. okay. Imagine if you're Spielberg and you're like in your early twenties or whatever, however mm -hmm. old he was at this it, time. Was he like twenty two or something? I don't know. I think he was, early he was young. He was, yeah. he was pretty young. Could yeah. you imagine Could, being that age? Your first feature film is a vehicle chase. It's uh, it's one long vehicle chase. Yeah, I feel like in the seventies. People were just used to doing these types of things. It was just easier. Mm. And nowadays it's harder for some reason. People just can't fathom. You can't strap a camera to a car. Mm. You need a green screen. We need to yeah. do it all in a studio. And mm -hmm. everyone in the 70s was just duct taping cameras to motorcycles and Mad, Mad Max. Yeah. Duel reminds me of Mad Max in many ways. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, but that's like, okay. That's <laughs> why I started... I, when you were saying like the, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that's You'll okay. be editing we'll this, edit, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make you sound good. No, I'm leaving all this <laughs> in. I'm leaving all this in, Nathan. I, I, when I started thinking about Mad Max, I couldn't remember what I was originally going to say. Yeah, yeah. The 70s, they were better, I think, at doing mm. chase scenes. It's just because they did it for real. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Like they just chased each other and stuck cameras out the window. Yeah. And yeah. think about how hard it is because those roads, I mean, I think we, we know where those are mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, to Imagine like you're driving through the desert and that's, Pretty much, if that road is blocked for filming, like, where the hell are you going to go? There's nowhere to go. <laughs> I was just on that road on Soledad Canyon uh, mm -hmm. the other day. My brother and I were filming something on that road. There's nowhere to go. And there's mm -hmm. not many dirt turnoffs. Yeah. yeah. So you have to, like, wait. And the mm -hmm. traffic will be sitting there forever. Yeah. Like, what would you do? How expensive is it to... I mean, this is 1971, of course, too. Mm -hmm. But um, how expensive is it to, to shut down a road like that? For a chase scene, I don't, I don't know. I wonder. I've done a couple. I mean, you'd be like, oh, I've done some <laughs> high production value, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not looking things. for the answer. I, no, did, I, mean, I, did, I, I, I did a chase scene before well, inside a cops parking lot, which was kind of risky. Yeah. But <laughs> I've just, uh, I've done a couple things where they have shut the road down, like just random commercials. I did this one commercial was on. I was on a pogo stick. Uh, I can't remember what it was for, but I was hopping down a mm. desert road, mm -hmm. and they had to block, and you mm. could see the cars way in the distance mm. waiting. I had this guilt about it, oh, wow. and I wasn't even the one in charge of it. I just was like, oh my gosh, they've been sitting there all day, uh -huh. yeah. and they're waiting for me, and then when you get the glares, when they all drive by, and they see me on this pogo stick, like, waiting for them to drive by, they're like, what are you doing? That's so important. That makes me sit here. So I, every time I see any driving, real mm -hmm. driving thing, I think that's why they do green screen now, yeah. because they avoid all that headache. Well, what so much respect for this film, and like how this was made, and... As much as I love in, you know, in camera, live action mm -hmm. stuff, uh, one thing that digital effects could have helped this movie with is deleting the reflection of the crewman who's clearly in the back seat. I never, and I never found that. Are you, oh. I, I never. They say it's in the phone booth or whatever. I, Steve, no, no, no. Steven Spielberg. Spielberg's in the phone I didn't, booth. I paused it and stared at it. I can show you right it. now. Okay. I can yeah. outline it with Just, my finger. Put, put it on the screen yeah. when you no, no. Yeah. Spielberg's in the phone booth, but yeah. in the beginning of the movie, the guy's driving and you see a reflection in the window mm -hmm. behind him and it's like a crewman just really? underneath. Uh -huh. And then later mm -hmm. in the movie, like when he's looking in the rearview mirror, you just see the back, of, you see a guy's mm -hmm. head. Really? So okay. I think like, but I know we all hate... It's fun though. Yeah. If you don't notice fun. it, also, it doesn't they, um, it. It's cool to see yeah. that here. Also when they're driving, because um, I watched a uh, like a behind the scenes thing with Spielberg, and yeah. he says that when they filmed it, they would film it over the same stretch of road over and over again, but they would change it up where instead of showing that side of the street, they turn the cameras around so that way it, it looked it, like yeah, you were going. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. It makes uh, sense that you utilize the one yeah. stretch of road over oh, can and we over. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, before we get too far, let's uh, just say the premise in case anybody uh, hasn't seen this. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's this incredibly <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's it's this incredibly simple premise of just a guy driving a car. He's he's on like a business trip or something, mm -hmm. or he's on his way home, yep. or I forget mm -hmm. where he's going. He encounters this truck driver mm -hmm. who is basically just being a road bully, mm -hmm. and at first it seems like a. 
I mean, what's great about this is that it's so realistic. It's like you can see the thought process of like trying to get in the left lane uh -huh. and then the truck mm. kind of swerves and, and you just... It's very picture. realistic. Yeah. It's like you you watch it and you go, I've lived this situation. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. the awkwardness I, um, of like, oh, am I going to pass you? Stop riding my tail mm -hmm. and just go around me. Yeah. I, I was a truck driver, not for a truck like this, mm -hmm. like a smaller thing, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, regular cars are just total dicks to you. They cut no. you off all the time. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, really well, relate this, it to the truck driver. Yeah. Right, right. I can relate well, too. I used to drive a dump truck and it takes a long time to shift through 10 gears. Yeah. And cars, there's a line of cars waiting for you. So yeah. every time I would pull off, I'd stay as long as I could on the line of the road so cars could get by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, you got a semi and you're blocking, to, yeah. you know, well, this, you this, own the road. And this yeah. truck owned yeah. the road no, in this, this movie. This truck was pure evil. Yeah. Like this was, this guy started out as just a common asshole. And as it goes on, he's a flat out. Uh, like killer, like he's, stalker. He, yeah, he's yeah, he's using a yeah, vehicle as a murder yeah. weapon, and you never see the driver. And well, you, you want to his, so yeah, bad. Yeah, you I see know, his yeah, yeah. silhouette, and, and a couple shots. If you pause it, you can see like the shape of his head yeah, yeah. Oh, through the window, but you can't see. him. You never get a clear look. Yeah, on you yeah. want to see this guy so yeah, yeah. bad, and you're thinking, I'm gonna see him. Yeah, yeah. And all you see is his arm and stuff. And mm -hmm. there's like this great shot where, like, um, I mean, there's so many great shots, but where they're parked in the, at the gas station, and he sees the truck parked next to him, and he like looks through his windshield to try and like see the yeah. driver and then the gas station attendant like gets in the way and to uh -huh, clean his window uh -huh, or whatever uh -huh. and he's like ah oh, fuck yeah. and then next thing he's gone he's not in the truck and then it's like oh fuck he's in the bar over there and then yeah. he goes into the bar which I don't want to jump the gun too much because I'm skipping so many things <laughs> I want to yeah, talk yeah. about <laughs> but th this, this movie is just incredible yeah I just want to say the main character David Mann he totally starts it mm. like the truck is going real slow in front mm -hmm. of him and I get the exhaust like Look, we've all been behind, like, either a slow driver mm -hmm. or, like, a driver who's swerving because mm -hmm. they're on their phone or something or yep. someone's fighting in the car. I usually just slow down and let them get ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, David Mann... You know, he's he's too important. He's he, got a, his tiny little Plymouth Valiant or whatever it is. He's trying to get home to his yeah. wife for dinner. Yeah, he yeah, like yeah. cuts around the truck. He totally starts it. Not not that I'm justifying what the truck does. <laughs> I'm just saying, if we're going to point figures, uh, David Mann started it. Yeah. And, well, you can't um, blame him for wanting well, to pass a slow here's the truck thing. that's blowing exhaast <laughs> yeah. in his face. Just slow well, down a little bit. Let the guy get ahead. Well, in, in most other movies, they would look for an explanation as to why this truck driver wants to kill him so much. Mm -hmm. Like, um... Like maybe this guy like deserves it or something, but in this movie, like, he does doesn't. he know he who he is and he's a reason yeah. he should be dead? Like, is he coming for him on purpose? Like, you're yeah. just wondering all of these things. Yeah. And like the example I'm thinking of, there's a movie called Phone Booth. Uh, by I Joel love Spider. that yeah. movie. It's amazing too. Yeah, but in that Phone movie Booth, doesn't get enough credit. It does That's not. No, movie. Phone Booth is great. But um, the thing about Phone Booth is that um, the guy in the who's who's trapped. The premise: he's trapped in a phone booth, and there's a sniper who's got mm. a gun to him the whole time and is talking to him on the phone. Um, so anyway, the guy in the phone booth cheated on his wife, and he's like a total asshole. Yeah. So there's kind of like a re. There's, I mean, even though the the, the sniper is totally extreme uh -huh. and wants to kill the guy for it, but he has a like motive kinda, and a reason. He yeah. has a motive, and this is a movie where if they would have made this today, it seems like they would have given the there driver. Been, there would have been three stories: A, B, and C. He would have yeah. a motive. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been, been like, so complicated. Mm -hmm. It would have been like Joyride with Paul Walker and Steve Zahn. That also is a killer that. truck. Okay. But wow. they prank the trucker in the beginning. Okay. They pretend to be a girl. They lure him to a hotel. And then, like, they send him to a random hotel room. And the guy yeah. gets mad, kills someone, and then hunts them down. Mm. So that one, you never see the trucker. Yeah. It's it's uh -huh. Buffalo Bill's voice. But, mm. like, that one, they kind of fuck it up because they give him, like, a reason to want to yeah. kill these guys. Which Duel is, is why like this nothing. movie, yeah. yeah. Which is why this movie is so unique because mm -hmm. they give him no reason. And it's just, like, less is more. Like, no mm -hmm. explanation. I yeah. think it's also just a t thing of the times as well. Because, like, like, Mad Max, like you mentioned earlier. It's just gotta get gas. They yeah. drive for yeah. Road Warrior. They just drive. Most yeah. of the movie is just them driving. And they're able it's to stretch awesome that action. out into yeah, like this whole movie. Yeah, That would be like a, t a five minute thing in a movie nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Fury Road came along and did yeah. it again, which, but mm -hmm. it's the like same guy doing what he used to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, that's why I love driving. I think I'm more just a fan. I grew up watching movies kind of in the 90s mostly, but 80s. I was mm -hmm. born in 81, so I grew up in the 80s, but I didn't really pay attention to much. But I find myself now, as a 38-year-old uh, film lover... <laughs> Me too, 38. Yep. <laughs> I love the 70s movies, because I think that just slower, the shots are better, they're more... like It's just, yeah. Yeah. More, I, just simpler and easier to watch, and it's like, 
not overcomplicated and flashy and fast yeah. and mm -hmm. I, I love I 70s definitely yeah. I, I like yeah. slower paced like and they do everything imagine. for real too yeah unlike Justin Silverman who thinks everything made before 89 sucks including <laughs> Mad Max really he yeah. thinks that oh he's an idiot he's he a must be joking <laughs> he's such no he's a hundred percent he's a bandwagon Mad Max fan he only likes Fury so he likes Batman Man. forever more than Batman probably probably <laughs> I mean he's not here right now but anyway he can't defend himself the whole movie like the it's about like David Mann. Like he's mm. very timid. He's mm. very like you know like meek and whatnot. You find out in the beginning that like some dude was trying to like hit on his wife in front of everyone. He didn't do anything about it. Wait, when did you discover this? What did I miss? I missed some major themes. This, like, this car is driving. This, this is one of the <laughs> extra scenes when he calls his wife. You think that I should should go out and 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 call Steve Henderson up and and challenge him to a fist fight or something? No, of course not. But. I mean, I think you could have at least said something to the man last night. She's like, oh, he practically whatever me in front of everyone. Mm. And he oh, didn't I just do don't anything. remember the, I guess I don't remember the conversation. And then like the first few encounters he has with the truck driver, he's like making excuses like, oh, well, maybe he was just, maybe he was just mad. Maybe he was oh, just getting, and yeah, then when he's yeah. in the, when he thinks the guys are in the cafe, he's like, oh, maybe I'll apologize to everyone. So this whole movie is about him just like, he has to man up and be aggressive to yeah, kind of yeah. like face this That's guy. That's true. Yeah. Because in the yeah. beginning he, he is so... And that's one of the greatest things about this movie. It's like he's so, like, um, what's the word, outnumbered or just o overpowered yeah, by this truck. Yeah, yeah. And by the end of the movie, he has to, like, just, yeah. you know, uh, uh, he has to become, like, stronger to, to outsmart this it's truck. It's like David yeah, yeah. and Goliath. Mm -hmm. Like, the truck it, is like a cat and mouse. The whole there movie is a game of okay. cat and mouse, yeah. for sure. And, and the that, truck itself is, yeah. like, the villain. It's, it's not the like, scariest it's looking truck. Yeah. <laughs> And you sort of think of the truck and the guy as the same entity yeah. in a way. Yeah. Because they are, it's almost like they worked, obviously, together. But the truck does have, like, a presence like mm. the yeah. driver does. And yeah. it has, like, a face in the grill. Like, mm -hmm. if you kind of look at it. And, they, yeah. they said he picked a Peterbilt truck because it kind of looked like a face. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And do you know why it has all the license plates in the front? I think you... I read mm -hmm. two different things. What's the one you read? That those were the license plates of all the other cars. That's that, what I always yeah. assumed. That's what I always assumed, I, I read, I, That's why I picked And then I read them. something else. It's like, sometimes trucks need to be licensed in different states. Because they travel but, through different states. But that one's way cooler. Mm, I think yeah, it's... Yeah. A lot of this movie with the truck, I it's up to your you, imagination. Yeah. I bet you, in the 70s, maybe that was more common and everyone just knew that. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you had to have multiple plates for if you're driving through different yeah. cities, the states, whatever. But I would think that... Steven Spielberg might have thought of that and been like, oh, this is cool. This yeah. is his victim. Yeah. You know? I think it works either way. That's basically the notches. But by the way, the whole time watching this, for some reason watching this movie last night, I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I watched it as an adult now because I totally relate to it a lot more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a yeah. but, but, but it was funny because like as I'm watching it with a truck driver, for some reason I just kept imagining it was Mike Matei. I don't know <laughs> why. I just kept picturing Mike like cursing at the guy and, the, and I like, just changed the whole movie for me. <laughs> I don't like remakes, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just would rather yeah. just leave things alone. Mm -hmm. But if there was ever a remake of this movie, and I always said, like, oh, if they did Back to the Future, I'd love to play Doc. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and okay. I would get ruined and my career would be over and everyone would hate me forever. <laughs> but I'd have to say yes. Duel would be the one I would I'd say yes to. As, as the, the truck as driver? The, as the guy in the car. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? Like freaking out. Because, again, I haven't watched this movie in a long time. As soon as he showed up, I'm like... Yeah, that's Nathan. That's t that's a Nathan oh, character. I feel mean, like I can play it pretty well. You know, yeah, play yeah, yeah. But since I haven't done that, I did. I shot a short. This is this is a straight up plug for something mm -hmm. I've done. I made a short film called Neutral. Yeah. And I shot it on the same road, a bunch mm -hmm. of the same roads uh, from uh, Duel, and uh, I named my character. Uh, but gave him uh, Tom. My dad's name is Tom, so I named him Tom, and I gave him Weaver. Which yeah. is Dennis Weaver. Dennis Weaver, the guy the who, actor David who played Man. David Mann. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, and you see that for a second on my uh, my badge, my ID badge. It says, mm -hmm. okay. I just love Duel so much. <laughs> yeah, me too. And my car in the yeah. movie sort yeah. of looks like the car in uh, Duel. I, like I thought when red. I watched it last night, I'm like, that looks like the car in Neutral. It's very similar. I, I don't um, have that car anymore. I wish my, I did, uh, but. My senior thesis, there's a scene where, uh, for 
whatever reason, don't worry about it. A guy is racing a Dodge Challenger with his Razor scooter. Had the Dodge Challenger just make a lion roar for no reason because of duel. <laughs> like the, duel. Mm-hmm. There's like a part where like, well, we'll get into it, I guess, part where the truck roars and that connects to yeah. another movie. Yeah, you know we'll, about we'll, that? we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. that. All right. We're going to have a spoiler section at the end of this where yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about the ending of the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. Even though It's hard to talk about movie, much without giving yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the movie came out in 1971, so yeah. I know spoilers aren't as big a deal for older movies, but I think this is really one you should see yeah. for yourself. Oh, totally. Um, we will have the spoiler section very soon, mm-hmm. but there's a couple scenes I want to talk about first. The, the Soledad Tunnel is shown there, which is just a tunnel in, mm-hmm. in uh, Soledad Canyon Road mm-hmm. in California. You, and Did you film in that? Yeah, well, no. Oh, well, yeah, it's in the nerd movie, too. But um, it was in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which is my favorite film of all time. Mm-hmm. It's in Death Race 2000, mm-hmm. and it was in Duel, and I didn't even know it was in Duel until... After we filmed there, I never made the connection because the mm-hmm. nerd movie, which which you were in mm-hmm. and we were mm-hmm. filming, uh, Nathan and I were filming right near where that it was tunnel was. Just to the right, of, you yeah. go through it, and then we were right beyond that. Yeah, I filmed on that road. I can't count how many times. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everyone films on uh-huh. that road, and in that tunnel, it's in. It's in. It's in. Yeah. My brother just shot a thing that's coming out soon. That and I never even made the connection that we we're doing like an ET thing and Spielberg and Duel and everything. Oh my god! Right yes, yes, wow, know, that's way yes. cooler. Oh, uh-huh. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I might not have seen that scene, I might have seen the TV version prior to this, and right. that oh. scene where he does probably the most noble thing the character does in the movie is, is like try to save a bunch of kids in a school bus. Mm-hmm. I mean, at first he's like in a hurry. He's trying to that's get past. That's the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, that's the tunnel right oh, there. Oh, it's right there. They added those scenes. It looks so for, different um, when you're yeah. in the cameras. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was one they, of the things they added to stretch it out for. Yep, yep, okay. yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a so good scene. TV. That's a yeah. really good scene. Yeah. So it was a, a TV uh, made movie, but they had to make it longer for like theatrical, I guess. Yeah, it was released in theaters um, in Europe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they added a few scenes, and one of them is where uh, the school bus is broken down, and um, the, the driver gets all the kids out, but then the guy, you know, is, is he's trying to get away from the truck at first, and he sees all the kids, and. Um, at, f- at first, there's no like immediate danger, but then he sees the truck show up at the other end of the tunnel, and he's like, "Oh shit, we got to get all these kids out of the way." And that's the first time where yeah. he's trying to like save. He's doing something more noble. Those so I kids think are that so annoying. No, they're so annoying. Yeah. So annoying. Uh, annoying <laughs> these kids. Look at the goosebumps. Look at the goosebumps. Yeah. Just think it's about. Just about oh yeah, it's yeah. a creepy. You know, I, I have a big dual poster in my house, okay. and yeah. I have the French poster, yeah. because it's kind of just maybe an interesting thought on like the difference between countries advertising. The mm. American, my, I asked for the, for my birthday, I said to my brother and my friends, I was like, I'd love to get a dual poster. So my friend Paul bought me the American dual poster, mm-hmm. and it was too scary for me. Oh, <laughs> it really <laughs> felt, it, it's just too off What was on it? Just it was a this? truck, and it was like in flames, mm. and it looked like a demon or something. Oh, that's cool. And it was like, it was very huh. like 70s looking horror. Wow. And I was like, because I'm not a big horror fan, because I get mm. scared way too easily. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I just can't look at that mm-hmm. so and my friend Paul was ticked because he bought it from me as like a limited edition type oh, thing yeah. big poster so I end up getting the French movie poster because it's just like him driving and it's the, the truck in the rear view and you yeah. see like his glasses and it's just oh, such cool. a more, more tame poster yeah. can we like, talk that's about more the, my style can we talk about the rear view mirror thing that's like a Spielberg mm. trope it comes back in Jurassic Park when they're being chased by the T-Rex oh, and he looks in the yeah, rear yeah. view mirror and it's on the cover That here. would be cool. Oh, you guys are together. good with yeah. details. Yeah. I watch movies. movie. Yeah, I like yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember anything. Well, there, there's so many right. shots of the rear view mirror and the truck in the background. It's so dress. Oh, and back. Jaws, the rear view mirror that's on the top of the shark. You can see. <laughs> you know, the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, some speculation here. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about who's the driver. Now, of course, yeah. you never see him other than, I don't, you don't think you ever see him, aside from the arm and mm-hmm. like the, the feet when he's walking out of the, uh, the truck. When he, there's the scene in the bar, the cafe or whatever it is, yeah. where, um, no, it is a bar, right? It's like a half, like, It's called cafe, cafe something, mm-hmm. but, yeah, yeah, it's a bar, it's whatever. Okay. Yeah. So there's a bunch of guys sitting at the it, bar. Yeah, they make it look and, more like uh, a bar. Yeah. yeah, so he's, like, looking at the shoes, and he's he's trying to see, like, which shoes match, and they all kind of have the same sort mm-hmm. of, like, brown shoes, and then he, like, is thinking about, like, going up to one of the guys and, like, trying to, to like, settle them. it or whatever, yeah, and, and then he gets into, like, a scuffle with this other guy, and you never find out if any of them actually were the driver because mm-hmm. after, well, the one guy who he has the scuffle with, he sees him leave and get, gets in a different vehicle. But while he's busy watching that guy, the truck speeds off and mm-hmm. he never looks back to the bar after that because he just bolts. Yeah. And then you, it could have been one of those guys at the bar still. So yeah. who yeah. knows? Yeah. 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 Is that when they start around that time, or maybe they did it earlier in the movie, I can't remember when he started doing the inner monologue. 
just never know. You just go along figuring some things don't change ever. Right? It starts there. It threw me that, off. It starts to always mm -hmm. feel like a Hitchcock. Movie. Ma maybe the TV version when it's shorter, mm -hmm. it, it like it's not as jarring. But mm -hmm. I remember when he got to the cafe in this one, he just starts having an inner monologue. And at first, I thought there was someone in the bathroom talking yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. And it took me a minute. I'm like, oh, he's talking to himself. Okay, okay. I like the inner monologue a yeah. lot in this movie because it really helps you. Mm -hmm. You can. The, he's the guy. The actor is a good. I can't remember his name again. David Mann. No, no the Weaver. Right. Weaver. It's like, I know the name. I put yeah, it on a freaking right. yeah, idea. You just went through a whole <laughs> thing <laughs> about the character. I don't remember it. I told you I remember the details. I watch movies and smile at the images that flash in front of my face. <laughs> go, find, go find the ID. <laughs> yeah, it's right over there. Oh, is um, it? Really? Yeah, I have it in my wallet. I keep oh, moving okay, it all the yeah. time. Um, Dennis Weaver is yeah. a good actor, and he can show. He was so good at expressing like the stress, and then they show the sweat and stuff on mm. him. Like, you really feel the panic. But then when they added the inner monologue, it just helped to, like, he seems like a lunatic. Yeah. And it makes you start to think like, oh, am I overthinking this? Yeah. You, know, you start to think everyone hates you. It's like, what did I say wrong? It's almost like what? a Twilight Zone type thing. Like, it just starts to be like, well, maybe this is Maybe all the truck, like, maybe, it was yeah. all misunderstanding. The truck yeah. was just trying to get around you. Yeah. And he doesn't even notice you. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, it really, the monologue, I think, takes yeah. it up another level yeah. to like the insanity. Now he's like mm. losing. That's, yeah. that's when he crashes into the fence yeah. and yeah. he starts just losing mm -hmm. his mind. And you're even and, but, seeing but, scenes that didn't happen, yeah. like when he walks up to the bar and says, like, hey, mister, can I buy you a drink? And then it like resets to him at the table again and he yeah, was thinking, and he was imagining yeah, what he would do everything else could have been imaginary as far as we know it's yeah. so good it's so it's good so and you good. know what? it is just incredible i say definitely see it um now if you guys are ready i want to talk about the ending oh yes. so, oh yeah yes. yeah spoiler alert um so in the end as we said he outsmarts the the truck and he uh get he gets the truck to drive over a cliff and that's mm -hmm. how he defeats the driver so for, first thing i want to bring up the sound effect which you alluded to you want yes. you want to talk about that yeah. yes the sound effect uh that the truck makes for some reason it mm -hmm. roars which is what i love mm -hmm. that i put in my mm -hmm. own movie it's the same roar that the shark makes which now makes no more no more sense because yeah. the shark's head's blown off but the yeah. shark roars at the end of jaws after mm -hmm. it blows yeah. up and it's the same sound effect from duel Well, I don't. I never thought it was a roar. I think it was just a dramatic, like sound. Yeah, I but, always thought but, it was a metal mashing, groaning, rumbling, yeah, yeah. scratching. But he stuff. because in Jaws: The Revenge, the shark actually does roar. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that. Maybe <laughs> that shark yeah. roars. But, um, but, but in but, first but, um, Jaws, it was more of a subtle moan, mm -hmm. right? Isn't yeah. that what they? Yeah, took? It, yeah. It, was, it was basically like when you when you see the shark, like the shark's remains under the water. You hear the you hear, you hear the, the truck screeching over the. End. It's the same size of the truck as it's crashing. Yeah, yeah. and um, and if you watch, oh, sorry, sorry. If you watch the behind the scenes, mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg will say that Jaws is like a sequel to Duel, like a spiritual sequel. Mm. That's what what he thought of it. No one else considers yeah. it to be one. Mm -hmm. I kind of do now that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, well, we had a theory. So tell me yours first. Okay. Oh, so me this is Tony's this theory, and I like it, and I agree yeah. with it. So we're talking about how, like, oh, maybe this was a sequel to Jaws, and I'm like, oh, maybe the. The, in the tanker that says flammable instead of like gas, he was just hauling the shark from Joel. <laughs> it's like a quad oh, really? tank. And then, like, and then <laughs> someone like opened it, they're like, oh, there's a shark in here. Oh, so wait, they, they released it in the waters. They were like transporting yeah. it. They're, they're at fault for what happened in the whole <laughs> And that, and that <laughs> would have been the shark groaning you know, as it was you know, falling down. You know what would have been great if it was like an environmental group? They're like, we gotta get this shark back to the wild. Not realizing he was it's desperate an evil to save the shark. He's just get out of the way, car. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> That's what was, so what ridiculous. Was the, what was the truck with this, the backward Spielberg name on it again? Oh, um, that at, was one, a, at one a point... garbage truck? No, 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 no. At one point, they're driving. He thinks he sees a cop car, but it's a pest removal car. It's like okay. an exterminator. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and Spielberg. it's Spielberg's name backwards. Okay. <laughs> mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, there's many things you can connect here. Yeah. But um, the, the shark think, in the truck is a joke. Well, you know what? I it was the shark driving the whole time. So the shark, <laughs> you got a hat on. The shark would would actually be dead. I and mean, to retract what I said, wouldn't the shark be dead in the truck after it? Unless that was a river it uh, crashed James, into. James, James, uh. have you seen the Jaws movies? Mm. Those sharks aren't real sharks. They're they're yeah, crazy I supernatural also, sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also don't think technically isn't Jaws supposed to be huge? I don't know if it could have fat fit in that tank. I probably could have. Maybe. You know what? It was a couple years before Jaws. Maybe it got bigger. Oh yeah, it was, it was seventy. <laughs> One, right? Do you know, since the truck fell off the cliff, apparently it's still there. Really? Yeah. yeah. I was going to go before yeah. to try to find it. I was going to take pictures and do a little video and bring it with me. 
but I didn't have time to and say. And for anybody who wants to go there, be careful. Because yeah. I, I ran into the the thing you're about to say is mm-hmm. there's a lot of crazy people with guns out that in that mm-hmm. area. I ran into them while filming Neutral. Yeah. Oh, boy. I went down. A, I was following mm-hmm. the map, and all of a sudden we're not on the desert road. Mm-hmm. We shot. Uh, wow. We shot out near the Kill Bill Church, so we drove mm-hmm. through all the dual area to get to yeah. our location. Mm-hmm. And that area, it's in a town called Palmdale. It's the very edge of LA. We went, I got stuck down a super sandy road with my car. Mm. We're trying to push my car in the sand and do an 18 point turn to get around mm. out of there. A lady comes out of like her trailer mm. house thing and she goes, get off my land. Wow. <laughs> and someone who says get off my land and not get off my property is uh-huh. a big difference. Yeah. You say land, you're a threat and I own a gun and <laughs> I will kill you. And she just stood there and screamed at us. So we're all like, we're trying, we're trying to get out of here. It was very off way. I was just, you also have in your head, like the hills have eyes. And yeah. you just, it just feels like that out there. And also, I don't know if it's still there to this very day. It was kind of just like a pile of red metal. Yeah. Is what it like. The car, so, means the car would be down there too if they drove the car off, yeah, right? Yeah, it should. Mm. I, I would imagine. Yeah. No, no. I was looking for the Mad Mad World car, like from the first scene when he drives off. Mm-hmm. I went he down went that sailing. cliff, yeah, right and I found a vehicle in that same position, but it was a pickup truck. It couldn't have been uh, the same thing. Maybe it was a mm-hmm. test. Um, maybe they're doing a test. Maybe, yeah. Oh, did um, you do you know the the story with that special effect at the end with the truck? Uh, what else about what? it? What they they had a, like a some kind of contraption to make it drive for itself for a bit mm-hmm. and it failed the day of so that meant that the driver <gasps> had to when the truck the real goes, dude had to do when that when the truck goes over the cliff you notice the the driver's side doors open mm. it's because they the thing didn't work so he had to drive right to the edge of the cliff and jump that's out. what i'm talking about the 70s are the best you're they just me. did it oh my god that's you're, what you're i read me, you're double check me. maybe that's a legend but that's I've, apparently I've you're me if, if you look at that scene again you don't see Could the you, driver, but you see his door really? open because he just so jumped out. So not only does he have to jump out of it and stay alive, but yeah. he has to not be seen on camera. Yeah. And when you think about that, Jesus jumping Christ. out while moving, you still roll. He had to jump out way before the cliff and not accidentally fall down the cliff. Yeah. And you're in your early 20s, and this is your first feature film. <laughs> you're responsible amazing. for all that. <laughs> no, if Spielberg never made Jaws, I mean, yeah. he, if he never made anything after this, this one movie would be a masterpiece. It's yes. enough. You don't that's think a about what yeah. it takes to get just like one simple shot. Yeah. In a movie. yeah. It's like someone's life is at risk. That's why I like mm-hmm. the 70s, because they're like, oh, just do it. Mad Max, yeah. they just had a camera guy in the back of a dirt bike. Yeah. yeah, and it was like this is so dangerous. A huge yeah. film camera. Yeah. I think about the film cameras on the side of this, the cars mm-hmm. in Duel. Yeah, it's like, that's and how, who's looking at it? Who's making sure it's in focus? And it's like, I know. It's, yeah, it, yeah. you're lucky you got yeah. anything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and you can't check it until like at least a day later. Yeah, yeah. You're you gotta get it developed or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You just gotta hope to God it that looks good. Yeah. Blows my mind. It really does. Such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. And just a couple last things to say about that last scene. Um. Okay. I just want to say like it, it, more. T- testament to the fact that um, less is more and mm-hmm. that this movie mm-hmm. succeeds so much by being so simple is that in any other movie they would have had the cops arrive they would have went down the cliff and like pulled the body out and then got out his id and been like yeah. oh it's it was that crazy lunatic who escaped from the asylum <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah this movie just leaves you no explanation never shows you who, the body or and, mm-hmm. and the body doesn't even appear to be in the truck you anymore. just see blood so i almost feel mm-hmm. like he kind of became this ghost that <laughs> haunts over the character because the last you see of David Mann, oh, he's sitting at the edge of the cliff just throwing those rocks over. And he's kind of got like, lost his mind. He's, he's yeah, yeah. He's laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only yeah. other thing I have to add is a quick fact about Steven Spielberg because we were talking about Jaws and I think this started on Jaws. I don't know if you guys ever heard this, but yeah. I heard jo- he was so stressed on Jaws the last day he didn't even show up because he thought the movie was so bad. He's like, really? the movie's going to stink. He didn't show up on the last day because he just didn't care anymore. Yeah. Mm. And then it did really well. So now it's a, it's a tradition for him to not show up on the last day of all his movies. Oh, wow. That's, that's, <laughs> wow, so that's they, amazing. So they that's dedicate great. the last day of the movies for like B-roll or second team stuff. Yeah. And he wow. just doesn't show up. That's what I've heard. And yeah. it sounds like something that I want to believe. To so. be fair, he has enough money now. He can do that. He could not show up the whole time. Yeah. It would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah. Wow. So yeah, check out Duel if you haven't. It's mandatory. Here, here, mm-hmm. Here's one thing though. Uh, we we're talking about remakes or sequels. We were mm-hmm. talking before. What I want uh, the gas station with the crazy lady who just has snakes and cages and iguanas and cages. Her you know that? Scene? Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Take a look at my snakes if you have time. I think 
that is the villain in a different horror movie, and Duel just interrupted that horror movie. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, it does so, seem like that. So that like shed that she has, <laughs> we were talking about like she's definitely got like teens in there. And There's being too much going on with her for yeah, her to yeah, yeah, yeah. one moment. So I want to see just like a side quill of that girl and like a horror movie, and then for like five minutes it turns into a scene from Duel and it goes right or back just, to being you her. Or just see a red truck drive by one shot of that movie. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh, goes Duel. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. Oh, because there's other trucks. There were three trucks used in the movie. Yeah. One, as we said, is at the bottom of the cliff. One yeah. was junked, and the other one is owned by a, a collector. Someone okay. has it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. That's the one I so want. So they find. should get that truck out and make a make a, a whatever that crossover. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. With that cycle and put yeah. us in it. Put us in it. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs>